Welcome to this video on relationships. You can download the Excel spreadsheet below to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Desktop. In this video, we will define relationships, we will discuss our business scenario and its corresponding data model diagram, we will then use this diagram to build a Tableau data source that includes relationships. Once we've built our data source, we'll use it to answer some important business questions. Along the way, we'll learn various aspects of the interface and the functionality of key features. This will include looking at the layout of the data pane, exploring how to show or hide null values, creating calculations using fields from multiple tables, and using the auto-generated count fields. Lastly, we'll fine-tune our performance options settings, such as cardinality and referential integrity. What are relationships? Relationships are the noodles that connect related tables on the Tableau data source page. They define how data source tables relate to one another based on common fields. Relationships provide several key benefits. A single data source can answer a wide variety of business questions. Relationships also enable an intuitive analytics experience for all types of users. Data sources are easy to create and are optimized for efficiency, leading to fast reporting. Before jumping into Tableau Desktop, let's familiarize ourselves with our business scenario. We own a convenience store. We want to analyze our transaction data to answer business questions. Our convenience store sells eight products. Each product has a unique product ID, a product name, unit price, and unit cost. Each product falls into one category. Each category has many products. The line between the tables signifies this one-to-many relationship. The two tables relate based on a common field, category ID. Many transactions occur each day. Each transaction has a unique transaction ID. Some customers use our reward card system during a transaction. This provides us with a partial list of customers. Doug was a repeat customer in transactions one and three. Transaction 4 had an unknown customer. There is a one-to-many relationship between the customer table and the transaction table. The two tables relate based on a common field, customer ID. How do transactions and products relate? A transaction can have many products. A product can appear in many transactions. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. Since there is no common field between the two tables, Good database design would resolve this issue by adding a transaction detail table in the middle. Transaction ID combined with product ID uniquely identify each row. The quantity sold is also recorded. During transaction one, two magazines and one water were purchased. The many-to-many -many relationship between the transaction table and the product table has been replaced by two one-to-many relationships. Now that we understand our data model diagram, Let's build this out in Tableau Desktop. Open Tableau Desktop. On the Start page, connect to a Microsoft Excel file. Select the Convenience Store spreadsheet and select Open. On the Data Source page, our five tables are located on the left. We'll start by bringing in our most detailed level table. Drag the Transaction Details table to the canvas. A preview of the table's contents will appear below. As we bring in the remaining tables one by one, our data source will resemble our data model diagram rotated by 90 degrees. Drag the product table onto the canvas to the right of the transaction details table. Notice the noodle that represents the relationship between the two tables. The edit relationship window will appear. Tableau Desktop has automatically related the two tables based on a common field, product ID. We could also manually select the common fields. There are performance options settings available. For now, we'll use the default settings. Close the edit relationship window. From the left, drag the transactions table onto the canvas to the right of the transaction details table. Confirm that the tables are related based on transaction ID. Close the edit relationship window. From the left, drag the category table onto the canvas to the right of the product table. 
Let's see what happens if we accidentally connect it to the wrong table. Notice the warning that there is no common field between the two tables. To fix our drag and drop mistake, close the edit relationship window, then use the drop down of the category table and select move to and then product to move the category table to the right of the product table. The tables will relate based on the common field, category ID. Close the edit relationship window. Lastly, drag the customer table onto the canvas to the right of the transaction table. The tables will relate based on the common field, customer ID. Close the edit relationship window. From the file menu, select save. We'll save as type Tableau Packaged Workbook so as to embed the data within the workbook. Name the file as Convenience Store. Click Save. Click on Sheet 1. On the left is the data pane. Notice that the fields are organized by table. Within each table, a horizontal line separates the dimensions from the measures. Each table contains an automatically generated field that is a count of the number of rows in the table. Let's format unit cost and unit price as currency. For each, use the dropdown, default properties, number format, currency standard, and click OK. Save the workbook. Let's answer a few business questions. Question one, what were our best and worst selling products? Also display the product IDs. From the product table, drag product name to the rows. From the transaction details table, drag quantity sold to the columns. Sort by quantity sold in descending order. Set the fit to entire view. Our best selling product was water. Our worst selling products were pencils and pens, which were not sold in any transactions. To limit the results to products that actually sold, click on the two nulls indicator and then on filter data. This filters quantity sold to non-null values only. Let's undo this filter since the unsold items are important to see. Let's move on to displaying the product ID. It is a common field between the product table and the transaction details table. It matters which table we drag product ID in from. If we drag it in from the transaction details table, we will only see the six products that were sold. Let's instead drag the product ID in from the product table. This displays the complete list of products. Sort the bar chart again. Rename the sheet as best and worst selling products. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question two. What was the contribution margin per product? Contribution margin equals unit price minus unit cost. Let's create a calculated field. Name it contribution margin. From the product table, drag in unit price. Type a minus sign, then drag in unit cost. Click OK. Notice that contribution margin appears within the product table. That is because it is based on fields that come from that one table only. Let's format contribution margin as currency standard. We will validate our calculation by creating a text table. Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard while selecting product name, contribution margin, unit cost, and unit price. At the top right, click on show me. Select text table, and then click show me again to close it. From the toolbar, change the fit from standard to entire view. On the measure value shelf, rearrange the measures into the following order, unit price, unit cost, contribution margin. We can clearly see that unit price minus unit cost is leading to correct contribution margin values for each product. Rename the sheet as contribution margin per product. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question three. What were the sales revenue, profit, and profit margin per category and product? 
we'll create three calculated fields. Name the first one Sales Revenue. From the Transaction Details table, drag in Quantity Sold. Type an asterisk, which is the multiplication symbol. Then, from the Product table, drag in Unit Price. Click OK. The new Sales Revenue measure appears at the bottom of the data pane. That is because it is based on fields from multiple tables and therefore cannot be placed within any one table above. Format Sales Revenue as Currency Standard. The second calculated field we will create is Profit. From the Transaction Details table, drag in Quantity Sold. Type an asterisk, then from the Product table, drag in Contribution Margin. Click OK. Profit also appears at the bottom of the data pane since it uses fields from multiple tables. Format Profit as Currency Standard. The third calculated field we will create is Profit Margin. The formula is the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales revenue. This is an aggregate calculation because we are using the sum aggregation within the formula. It's important here to sum before dividing instead of the other way around to avoid incorrect profit margin percentages that would sum to greater than 100%. Click OK. Aggregate calculations always appear at the bottom of the data pane. Format profit margin as a percentage with one decimal place. We will validate our numbers in a text table. Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard while selecting category name, product name, profit, profit margin, and sales revenue. At the top right, click on show me. Select text table and then click show me again to close it. From the toolbar, change the fit from standard to entire view. On the Measure Values shelf, rearrange the measures into the following order. Profit, Sales Revenue, Profit Margin. Notice that the profit divided by the sales revenue is leading to correct profit margin percentages for each product. To confirm that the percentages are correct at the category level, go to the Analysis menu, Totals, and Add All Subtotals. The subtotal values are correct. Let's also show column grand totals. The grand total values are also correct. Rename the sheet as Profit, Sales Revenue, and Profit Margin per category and product. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 4. Who were our most frequent customers? From the Customer table, drag Customer Name to the rows. From the Transaction table, Drag the automatically generated transaction count field to the columns. Sort by transaction count in descending order. We see that Doug was our most frequent customer. Additionally, the unknown customer from transaction number 4 is included in our comparison. Rename the sheet as count of transactions per customer. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 5. Who were our most profitable customers? This question brings together data from four of our five tables. From the customer table, drag customer name to the rows. From the bottom of the data pane, drag profit to the columns. Sort by profit in descending order. We see that Doug was our most profitable customer. Rename the sheet as profit per customer. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 6. From which categories did each customer purchase, and in what quantity? This question brings together data from all five of our tables. From the Customer table, drag Customer Name to the rows. From the Category table, drag Category Name onto the rows to the right of Customer Name. From the Transaction Details table, drag Quantity Sold to the columns. Sort by Quantity Sold in descending order. The results correctly reflect all the transactions that occurred. Rename the sheet as quantity sold per customer and category. Save the workbook. Performance options are optional settings we can specify when defining relationships between tables. The default settings ensure that no data goes missing in our visualizations. We can adjust the settings to improve performance. We define the settings based on our data model diagram and our business rules.
Consider the following questions regarding our business rules. Can a customer have no transactions? Can a transaction have no customer? Can two customers split a transaction? Can a category have no products? Can a product have no category? Can a product be in multiple categories? Since Tableau Desktop cannot assume the answers to these questions, it must consider all of these options to be valid. Let's define our business rules so as to maximize query performance. We will define these business rules as we adjust our performance option settings. One category can have many products. A product belongs to one category only. Some categories have products. This means that a new category can be added before assigning products to it. All products must belong to a category listed in the category table. One customer can complete many transactions. A transaction is completed by one customer only. Therefore, two customers cannot split a transaction. All customers have completed at least one transaction. Some transactions were completed by customers listed in the customer table. Other transactions were not. One transaction can have many transaction details. A transaction detail belongs to one transaction only. All transactions have transaction details. All transaction details belong to a transaction listed in the transaction table. One product can appear in many transaction details. Each transaction detail contains one product only. Some products appear in a transaction detail. Some products, such as pencils and pens, do not. All transaction details contain a product listed in the product table. The performance of our workbook is now improved and the results in our visualizations are still the same. For additional help on the use of relationships, please visit help.tableau.com. Thank you for watching this video on relationships. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to getting started with mapping in Tableau. This video covers the various options for mapping and using background images in Tableau Desktop. At its core, geographical analysis comes down to plotting points. The map image provides the background and coordinates are plotted on it. Latitude indicates how far up or down from the equator. Longitude indicates how far east or west from the prime meridian. Any point on a map can be represented with latitude and longitude coordinates. In Tableau, coordinates need to be in decimal format. Positive latitudes indicate the northern hemisphere. Positive longitudes indicate eastward from the prime meridian. In this way, every point on the globe has unique latitude and longitude coordinates. Incidentally, Tableau uses the same projection as Google Maps, which is Web Mercator. If your dataset has latitude and longitude fields, Tableau can automatically plot them on a map. On the other hand, if your data doesn't have latitude and longitude, but you have geographic place names, such as city, country, or province, Tableau will determine their coordinates and provide the fields latitude generated and longitude generated. If your data contains locations without latitude and longitude coordinates that Tableau cannot recognize, you can add to the database and enter your own custom geocoding, or simply blend in the geographic data. The videos, Expanding Tableau's Mapping Capabilities, and Custom Geocoding go into more depth. Locations can be plotted on a map in two ways, as a point or mark to represent the entire area, or a polygon covering the area. Tableau has polygon data, or filled maps, for many geographic locations built in. It's also possible to provide your own polygon data to create custom polygon maps, such as this map of national parks in the UK. Check out the Polygon Maps video for more information, including creating custom territories on maps. If the default map tiles aren't what you need, maybe your analysis is of ocean currents, Tableau offers the option for connecting to Mapbox or a web map service. There's a video on each of these options. If you need to do something like plot the location of cavities on a dental chart, you can upload an image directly and assign it coordinates, as shown in the background images video. 
The options for geographic analysis in Tableau are extensive and powerful. There are many options for customization to make sure your analysis needs are met. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to getting started with calculations in Tableau. You can download the exercise workbook to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. Similarly to formulas in Excel, calculations allow you to manipulate your data in any number of ways. Creating a calculated field is as easy as right-clicking in the data pane and selecting Create Calculated Field. Functions in Tableau fall into one of several main categories – number, string, date, etc. Calculated fields are created by defining a formula using these functions or basic operations. Let's create a simple logical calculation on our profit field as an example. If sum of profit is greater than zero, then positive, else negative, end. I'm ignoring if profits are actually zero for simplicity's sake, and we'll name this sign of profit. Note that there's an equal sign in front of the field here. This indicates it's a calculated field, not natively from the data source. If we bring this calculated field to color, we see that our profit bars are colored appropriately. If we want to see what our costs are, defined as sales minus profit, we can add that to the view very simply by double-clicking and typing it directly into the shelf itself. Note that autocomplete pops up as I type, and I can hit Enter to select. We can also drag in a field from the data pane and hit Enter. And there we have the calculations results visualized, and we have a new pill with our formula. If this is a calculation that we find useful and want to keep, we can simply drag the pill into the data pane, and we can always rename the field if desired. While learning about how Tableau handles calculations, a really important concept is the distinction between regular calculations versus what we call table calculations. A regular calculation, such as sales minus profit, is passed as part of the query that Tableau asks of the data source, and the computation is handled by the data source itself, with only the result set being returned to Tableau. A table calculation is a secondary calculation that is performed on top of the returned result set. This computation is done within Tableau. An example here is running total of sales. A table calculation is indicated by the delta symbol on the pill. Table calculations can either be written like any other calculation, using the table calc functions in the calculation editor, or there is a set of predefined, commonly used computations called quick table calculations. These include options like running total, percent of total, and year over year growth. Which ones are available depend on the data in your view. See the video on table calculations for more specific information. Thank you for watching this calculations training video. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau.